Hi, welcome to the second part of This Week in Tudor History for the week beginning the 22nd of February. Today, I'll be introducing you to a literary patron and her husband, a clergyman who ended up dying on a voyage far from home and being buried at sea, and a famous reformer whose peacemaking and pragmatic approach failed to heal rifts and to please people. Oh, and he ended up being dug up and posthumously tried for heresy and burnt. Yes, burning of dead bodies. So first we have an event that happened either on the 24th or the 25th of February 1618. That is when 65-year-old literary patron Elizabeth Carey, nay Spencer, Lady Hunsdon, wife of Sir George Carey, second Baron Hunsdon, died from what was described as a palsy, probably a stroke. She was buried at Westminster Abbey in the Hunsdon family vault. Let me tell you a few facts about this Tudor lady. Elizabeth was born on the 29th of June 1552 at Althorpe in Northamptonshire and she was the sixth child of Sir John Spencer and his wife Catherine Kitson. Elizabeth married Sir George Carey, eldest son of Henry Carey, Baron Hunsdon and grandson of Mary Boleyn in December 1574. Their marriage was a happy one with Carey describing Elizabeth as the sweetest companion that ever man hath found in this life. He described her that way in his will. They had one child, a daughter Elizabeth, born in 1576, whose godmother was Queen Elizabeth I. George Carey died in 1603 and Elizabeth went on to marry Rafe Ur, 3rd Baron Ur, in late 1612 or early 1613. Elizabeth is known for being a literary patron and had works by Edmund Spencer, Thomas Nash, Thomas Churchyard, Thomas Playfair, Abraham Fleming and Henry Locke dedicated to her. Edmund Spencer wrote of her as Phyllis, the flower of rare perfection. And composer John Dowland also enjoyed her patronage. Elizabeth's daughter, also called Elizabeth, married Sir Thomas Barclay, with whom she had two surviving children, and then, after his death, Sir Thomas Chamberlain. She was also a literary patron. Interestingly, our next This Week in Tudor History event concerns Elizabeth Carey's husband, Sir George Carey, because he was born on the 26th of February, 1548, in the reign of King Edward VI. As I said, George was the eldest son of Henry Carey, 1st Baron Hunsdon, who was married to Anne Morgan. Here are some facts about George. He was educated at Trinity College, Cambridge, and in May 1570, George was knighted for his military service during the 1569 Northern Rebellion. In 1578, he was made Marshal of the Household, and in 1583, he was made Constable of Bamborough Castle and Captain of the Isle of Wight. George served as a Member of Parliament, MP, for Hertfordshire in 1571, for Canterbury in 1572 and for Hampshire on several occasions. He was also a Justice of the Peace for Hertfordshire in the 1580s and Lord Lieutenant of Hertfordshire in the 1590s. George served Queen Elizabeth I on missions to the Low Countries in 1578 and to Scotland in 1582. Following his father's death in July 1596, George succeeded him as captain of the Queen's Gentlemen Pensioners and then as a Privy Councillor and Lord Chamberlain. He also became Second Baron Hunsdon. Like his father, George was a patron of the theatre and supported the company known as the Lord Chamberlain's Men. George was elected to the Order of the Garter in 1597. Ill health led to him giving up his post as Lord Chamberlain in May 1603, and he died on the 8th of September 1603. As George only had a daughter, his younger brother John became third Baron Hunsdon. 
Now, moving on to the 27th of February. On the 27th of February, 1583, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, 36-year-old diarist and Church of England clergyman Richard Maddox died near Espirito Santo Harbour near Vitoria in Brazil. Maddox served as chaplain and secretary to Captain Edward Fenton on his 1582 voyage to the Moluccas and China. Maddox's last diary entry was on the 31st of December 1582 with a simple comment on the weather that day. It's thought that he was buried at sea. Here are a few facts about Maddox. Maddox was born on the 11th of November 1546. It's thought that he came from Uffington in Shropshire, but nothing is known of his family, apart from the fact that he had an older brother, Thomas, and a younger brother. Maddox was educated at Shrewsbury School and then All Souls, Oxford, graduating BA in 1571 and MA in 1575. Maddox was ordained as a priest in the Elizabethan Church of England in 1580 and was a university proctor at All Souls in 1581. Historian John Bennell explains that Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, recommended that Maddox apply for the post to chaplain for a trading voyage due to be undertaken by Captain and Admiral Edward Fenton on the galleon Leicester, which was owned by Leicester and Henry Uttred. The aim of the voyage, whose main investors were Leicester, Uttred and Sir Francis Drake, was to set up an English outpost at Calicut on the Malabar coast for trading with the Moluccas, trading spices. Maddox was appointed as Fenton's chaplain and secretary, and the fleet of four ships sailed from England on the 1st of May 1582. It was a troubled voyage with arguments between the captains and admiral. Maddox kept a diary covering the 1st of January 1582, the lead up to the voyage, and Maddox's winding up of his affairs in Oxford and ending on the 31st of December 1582. And it survived and is part of the British Library's collection. It is not known how Maddox died. Fenton simply recorded his death near Esperanto Santo Harbour on the 27th of February. But Maddox had recorded having blood let from his arm on the 19th of October and still suffering with stiffness in that arm in the December. Maddox never married and had no children. In 1976, Maddox's diary was published edited by Elizabeth Story Dono. Here is an extract from the blurb. As a circumstantial document, the diary provides diverse information, ranging from details of the Oxford and London scenes and the organisational aspects of the trading venture to the customs of the natives of Sierra Leone, including the earliest English record of an African language, together with drawings of the flora and fauna. As a personal document, it includes mordant comments on many individuals, particularly those participants in the venture who wish to turn to piracy. What an amazing record to have of the voyage. I'm going to have to track down a copy. I really want to read it. Then finally, moving on to our final date of this week. During the night of the 28th of February, 1st of March, 1551, Theologian and Protestant reformer Martin Bucer died in Cambridge. He was 59 years old. Let me tell you a bit more about this reformer who ended up being posthumously burnt as a heretic in Mary I's reign. Martin Bucer was born on the 11th of November 1491 in Celesta, Alsace, to Cooper Klaus Butzer, that's the German variation of the name, and his wife Eva. In his childhood, his parents moved to Strasbourg, but he stayed in Celesta with his grandfather, and he joined the Dominican Priory there in 1507, taking his vows the following year. His studies for the priesthood involved him moving to Heidelberg and then Mainz. It is thought that he was ordained in around 1516. He went on to attain a Master's and Bachelor of Theology at Heidelberg. 
In April 1518, he heard Protestant reformer Martin Luther give his disputation. This had a major impact on Bucer. His change in religious views led to him being released from his monastic vows in 1521 and becoming a secular priest. He served as a chaplain to the Count Palatine of the Rhone before taking the post of pastor of Landstuhl, where he married Elizabeth Silbereisen, a former nun. The couple had several children together before his wife and some of their children died of the plague in 1541. He then married widow Vibrandis Rosenblatt. In 1523, Bucer was forced to flee to Strasbourg with fellow reformer Heinrich Motherer due to their work for the Reformation. Bucer was protected in Strasbourg due to his father being a citizen there. There he lectured on the New Testament, wrote his first treatise that no one should live for himself but for others, and then in 1524 was appointed as a pastor. In Strasbourg, Bucer was opposed by the Catholic bishop and also the Anabaptists, but he took a lead in reform in the city. Although Bucer had been influenced originally by Luther, his views on the Eucharist saw him allying with reformers like Zwingli. Lutherans believed that Christ was really present in the Eucharist, while those following Zwingli believed that Christ was spiritually present by faith. Although Bucer actually came to believe that the disagreement was more to do with words than belief. In 1529, when Zwingli and Luther attended a meeting arranged by Landgrave Philip of Hesse to try and reconcile their beliefs on the Eucharist, Zwingli and Bucer tried to reconcile with Luther, but were rebuffed. In the 1530s and 1540s, Bucer helped with reform in other cities like Ulm, Augsburg, Hesse and Cologne. In the 1530s, Bucer supported the idea of a national church council that could work towards a compromise to please both Catholic and Protestant theologians and to prevent schism. However, the Eucharist was always the sticking point. Peacemaker and pragmatist Bucer wanted to use ambiguous language to try and please different sides and to bring them together, but ended up being criticised by the different sides. In April 1549, Bucer and his friend Paul Fargus were forced to leave Strasbourg and go into exile after the city was compelled to accept the Augsburg interim which was Charles V's decree imposing Catholic rights throughout his empire. They had somewhere to go, though, as they were invited to England by Thomas Cramner, Edward VI, Archbishop of Canterbury. Bucer and Fargus met King Edward VI in May 1549, just after their arrival. In England, Bucer's opinion was sought on Edward VI's first prayer book, and his thoughts used to revise it for the second prayer book. As the Encyclopaedia Britannica notes, no one was happy with the resulting prayer book. It didn't go far enough for the radical reformers, yet offended the conservatives. In his final years in England, Bucer was Regis Professor of Divinity at Cambridge, while Fargus lectured on Hebrew. Bucer's friend and colleague, Fargus, died in November 1549, and Bucer's health began to decline. It's thought that tuberculosis caused his death on the 28th of February, 1st of March, 1551. He was buried in Great St Mary's Church at a funeral attended by around 3,000 people. Cranmer and Catherine Brandon, Duchess of Suffolk, were bequeathed his books, while the king received his manuscripts. As well as treatises and proposals for reform, his works included commentaries on several books of the Bible. As I explained in a previous On This Day event for the 6th of February 1557, the remains of Yusa and Fargus were exhumed and publicly burnt with their works on Market Hill, Cambridge, after they were posthumously excommunicated and found guilty of heresy. That was in Mary I's reign. In Elizabeth I's reign in 1560, their condemnations were overturned. I'll give you a link to my video on the burning of their remains so you can find out more about that. 
Thank you for joining me for this week in Tudor history. Please do subscribe by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And of course, you can give me a like and leave a comment if you wish. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.